So like, I, I believe. Yeah. I changed that last time. Okay. So, for citation 11th. So that means our last citation in discussing the assignments. So let's review what we've discussed in the previous citation. We presented the page table. And we said that the page table is basically a data structure that quickly maps the VPN to a page table entry. And we've said that each process should have its own page table. And all addresses within a virtual page should map to the same physical page. Um, and so uh, one of the requirements for that page table to be able to, uh, or the functionality of that page table should be given a virtual address and an operation should first check if that virtual address is valid, which means it falls within one of the defined region, and then check if the operation in that page, uh, if the operation matches the permissions uh, for that page, and if all are valid, then get the physical address. And we refer for every entry in that page table as the page table entry. What should we keep? Uh, we've said that this depends on your data structure. So you might need to keep a virtual page number, but you need to keep physical page number and permission of that uh, uh, page and the state whether that page is on disk or uh, in memory, and whether that page is valid, which means so this basically means that y you have a physical allocation, a physical page allocated for it. Uh, for that virtual page. And also uh, referenced if that page has been uh, recently referenced or not. Uh, and some other, depending on the, uh, what data structure you're using. Um, we've presented the three table, uh, page table designs. We've said there is a flat page table design that you shouldn't use. But uh, just to know that this page table, so if you use a flat page table, you're going to retrieve the uh, PTE in order one or constant time and most entry could be unused. So you're wasting space, but another design is the linked list page table, where uh, you have a list of PTEs and each one of these refers to an actual physical page. Um, but if you want to retrieve a page table entry, you need to search or go through the whole list. So order of n uh, time. We've also presented the two-level page table, we've said uh, multi-level page tables basically are just like uh, tree-like data structures mapping VPN to PTE. So if we want to implement the two-level page table, then we need to break up uh, the VPN into two parts, 10 bits each, and then each part maps to an entry into, the, into a separate level of the tree. Um, so a uh, valid entry in the first level page table, we said that it should contain a, a pointer to the second level page table, where the second level page table can still be either a table of pointers or table of uh, PTE structures. Um, and this should only be allocated as needed. Uh, that means if uh, there is no uh, virtual uh, physical page allocated for that virtual page or if the page is not valid you shouldn't allocate uh, uh, a second level page table for it and it should be null in the first level page table. So the retrieve time is uh, again constant time uh, usage is better than a flat page table and worse than the linked list. <coughs> Uh, we've also presented the address space. So the address space basically is a collection of virtual addresses that the operating system make, uh, make them available for the user process. So what should we maintain in the address space structure? We've said that we need to maintain region information, start address size of that region, uh, and the permission of that region, stack heap information, uh, and also a page table pointer. And we've so you should uh, implement uh, the interfaces for all, all the interfaces for address space that are defined in address space.h. And you can find a usage example in load of how these interfaces are used um, uh, are, yeah, are used in load elf. So the last thing that we presented is the TLB, and we've said the TLBs basically a buffer that is used by the MMU to uh, 
quickly map virtual address to physical address. And uh, we have a fixed number of TLB entries per core, which is 64. And the size of each uh, TLB entry is 64 bit divided, as you can see. So we use the first 20 bits as the VPN. The rest are unused. This is from the first 32-bit uh, and the second 32-bit. So the first 20 bits is the uh, PPN or the physical page number. And then we have also 12 bits that are unused, except for um, the TLB low valid and the dirty. And we said the valid indicates if that translation uh, in the TLB uh, is valid or not. And the dirty tells that um, the permission of that page, whether that page is uh, uh, read-only or uh, read-write. Uh, <clears throat> so we've said that we have three different uh, VM fault. So uh, either uh, VM fault happens on a read for a missing TLB entry, or on a write for a missing TLB entry, or VM fault read-only, and that's what uh, where the uh, dirty bit comes into play. Uh, so if a uh, VM fault happens on read-only, that means I'm trying to write into an existing translation, but that page is a read-only page. Uh, we have a helper, inf uh, helper functions that are defined for us to use with the TLB, are defined in tlb.h. So uh, the general uh, VM fault uh, is basically we check the fault address if that address is valid and falls within one of the defined region. And then we check the operation of that uh, uh, address, or sorry, uh, the operation that are, we are trying to perform on that page, whether it matches the page permission or not. And then we check if it's a TLB fault, page fault, or both. And if it's a page fault, then we allocate page, uh, physical page for it as needed. And then we update the TLB entry. So the operation could go through. So this is basically what we've discussed last time. Any question on last time? OK. So today we're going to, again, overview uh, what, what left for us with the assignment 3. Then we're going to discuss the physical page states, virtual page states, swapping, swapping out, and swapping in. Uh, so as you can see, uh, we are at the third checkpoint, which is swapping. Uh, the next uh, deadline going to be uh, not this Friday, the one after, May 6. Um, and so let's start. So you might be familiar with this. We've discussed it before. But as we have uh, physical page states, we have uh, virtual page states, so we need to compare these two together. But now, th since we have the swapping enabled, then we really need to uh, consider all the uh, states, uh, even though maybe in OS 161 you really don't need maybe, e again, the dirty and clean. Uh, but uh, to better understand how you should uh, uh, implement swapping, you need to understand the full picture of a swapping and how does it uh, function. So um, we have four states, basically, for the physical page state. The free, this is what we start with. So if the physical page is, is a free, you mark it as a free. It should be marked as a free. Um, we have another state, which is fixed. And that, uh, as we discussed, that we need to use this for the kernel pages, uh, exception, core map, whatever page that you should not swap out uh, out of memory, then you should uh, uh, put it as a fixed. So, and this is what uh, will happen with allocate pages, and because allocate pages uh, just like allocate kernel pages for us. Uh, and then, so this is basically used with kernel pages. And then we have on the other side is the dirty and clean that is used with the user pages. Uh, so uh, whenever we uh, create or allocate a page for the user, then the first uh, state that should get is dirty. Why? Because we have that page allocated in memory, but we have no copy. It has no copy on disk. Or we can also use that dirty uh, state for if we have uh, a page uh, allocated and it has a copy on disk, but the content of the page in memory and the content that is on disk is uh, different. 
So uh, with the clean state, uh, we use it if we have the page allocated and the content in the memory and in disk are uh, the same, are exactly the same. There is no difference. So as you can see uh, here, then from page alloc, which allocates user pages for us, uh, first the first state we get in is the dirty state. Uh, and then uh, once we flush or allocate uh, or create a copy on disk, then uh, that page state should be clean. And on VM fault, again, uh, that page should be, uh, if, if it's accessed and there is a write operation on it, then should be, again, uh, changed to dirty up until the time that, again, we flush it to disk. Um, and that's also whenever we free a dirty page, then one of the steps is basically going into the clean state and then free it. So just like make sure uh, the content are the same, and then you need to, the content in memory and on disk are the same, and then you should free it. So these are the uh, physical page states uh, that we have. Any question on these? OK. So as we said, as we have uh, physical page states, we have a virtual page state. Uh, so the vir for the virtual part, um, or for the virtual pages, we have a three states, unmapped, mapped, swapped. Unmapped, this is the initial state, which is for all the uh, free pages or pages that are not yet. Yes? You have on-demand allocation, right? Yes. So when it will be unmapped? Yeah, so that depends on your data structure. If you're using Linglist, you sh I don't think you need these two states. What you need is the mapped and swapped. That's what you need with the linked list. If you're using um, a two-level page table, again, depends on how you're implementing the two-level or three or four-level page tables, how you're implementing them. So as we said, the last level page table is um, basically just like you have a, another table, for, okay, uh, that is a table of structures. So some people just like to find table of pointers. So if you have paid, paid just like a table of structures, and then you have all these structures defined, and you only have one entry that, that has a valid physical page entry, then for the others, you need to set the state as on. Yeah. So depending, uh, this is the general idea, but depending on your data structure, how you're implementing uh, the page tables, uh, you need to figure out what states you really need for your page table. So yes, if you're doing the list, uh, uh, there is no need because having a node in the list that means you having uh, you yeah. basically have a physical page so uh, that doesn't make sense to have the unmapped and mapped but what you need is a state that mapped or swapped is that page on in memory or in disk so unmapped basically the physical page is not allocated uh, map means the physical page is allocated and is in memory uh, swap means the physical page is allocated and in disk, so it's not in memory. Uh, <coughs> so yeah, here I can, as you can see, unmapped on VM fault, you, page, you allocate the page and then it is mapped uh, because once the VM fault happen, once you just like allocate or allocate an entry in your page table, then you need to j again uh, allocate the physical page for it. So Oh, so on VM fault, you call uh, the uh, page alloc, you allocate the page, and then you give it the mapped status. Uh, and once there is a VM fault happens with just like uh, you're out of memory, then you swap out that page. And then once the VM fault again happen, and you figure out that the VM fault is for a process that tries to access a page, a virtual page that is swapped out, then you need to swap in the page to the memory. And what happens to the physical space when you swap it in? When you swap it in? Yeah. OK. So the physical page is basically used, right? So uh, it should be. So yeah, that's what I was saying. For OS 161, yeah. we're not really implementing that dirty clean uh, mechanism. Uh, but it's good for you to know. So it should be clean. 
because you just copied out the content and disk onto memory, and those both content are the same, right? So it should be clean. And just like if you want to understand how, yeah. But then you'll, you'll be actually freeing, you'll not, you'll not be freeing the offset in the disk, but like the data structure which represents the disk, you'll be actually freeing that spot, right? Yes, that's what so we're going to discuss, so. Okay. If, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so if you swapped it in, then it should be the same copy, so it should be clean. So uh, these are the states for the virtual page states. Any question on these? OK. So now let's revisit the, t uh, the TLB uh, entry format. So as we said, we have these flags, which is the TLB O dirty and valid and no cache. But what we really need to care about now here is the TLB, uh, TLB low dirty. Uh, and what, what we've said about that flag is that uh, we set that flag to zero if the page is read only, and we set it to one if it's read write. But um, now that we have uh, the swapping enabled, uh, we can just like use that flag much better. But before I continue, just like let you know, this is an advanced. So if you're done, so you're not required to really implement this, but you can just like implement it later on if you're done. Uh, but it's a good idea to have an idea of what uh, now with the swapping enabled, the dirty bit, you can better use it in much more ways other than just like read only or read write. So this dirty bit of flag, we can use it either to determine if a page is a read only page, which we set to zero, as we said, or read write page, which, uh, which we set it to one. So let's say you're implementing copy on write uh, page, and that's what I told you for as copy, uh, that you can, for example, when you're copying uh, the pages, you can also, as an additional feature, implement copy on write, which means you basically don't copy that page, but you, you refer to the parent page. And whenever a write happens to that page, then you duplicate the page and write to it. So if you're implementing that feature, which is implement uh, on write page, uh, copy on write page, then you can set that flag to zero as long as you don't read, uh, as long as you read from that page. Once you write to that page, then, or once VM fold read only happens, then um, that means you are trying to write on an existing TLB uh, translation that the uh, dirty bit is set for it to zero. So what you're going to do is duplicate that page first, and then you set that uh, dirty flag to one to allow the write operation uh, happens to that page. So this is another use. A third use that you can use with the dirty bit flag is protect the clean pages. So what you can do is just like even though that page you can read and write to it, but you can still set that uh, dirty bit fla uh, flag to zero. So uh, uh, what happens is that as long as you read from that page, uh, as long as you read from that page, that's fine. Once you wanna, once a VM fault read only happens on it, that means you need to change the page state to dirty if it's a clean and then set the flag to one to allow the operation to continue, the dirty flag. So these are just like an advanced usage of the uh, dirty bit flag. Uh, any questions on this? So, OK. So now swapping. Swapping basically is the process of moving uh, data uh, back and forth from memory to disk. And uh, the main goal is just like to have um, to let your system just like have a view of the memory that is as large as the disk and as fast as the memory. So uh, there are two main interfaces for the swapping, which is swap out and swap in. So swap out, if we run out of physical pages in allocate pages or page alloc. So allocate pages allocate kernel page for us, page alloc allocate user pages for us, then we should swap out. Swap in if in VM fault, if a VM fault happens, 
and we determined that there is a user process that trying to access a swapped virtual page, then you need to swap in that page from disk and probably you need also to swap out again some other pages if you don't have enough uh, free physical pages available. So this is the swapping. Now let's discuss the swap out. So to swap out from memory to disk, uh, there are several steps that you need to follow. First of all is synchronization. So you need to prevent access to this page. So you, so the picture is little like that. I just like decide a page should be swapped out. That page doesn't belong to me. And it belongs to other process that might be running on other cores. So this is why we need to prevent access to this page first. Once we get a lock on that page, uh, we make sure that there is no access on this page, then we can uh, move forward with the swap out which is we need to remove the translation from the TLB uh, if it exists. And then we copy the content from the page, uh, uh, the page content from memory to disk. And if you're implementing the dirty and clean states, then this should only happen when uh, the page is dirty. But if, it, if the page state is clean, you basically uh, uh, just like, uh, free that physical page and you just like save an IO on the disk IO for that uh, uh, operation. Once you're done with this then you need to update the page table entry just like uh, of that process to indicate that your page is now on disk and it's not on memory. Uh, so we have a few, few questions for here to consider. Where should we store the page? How should we notify the uh, process? And where do we find the page later on when we want to swap it in? So uh, the first thing is swap storage. So you only have one option. Uh, previously, it was mentioned that you have two options, just like a file or um, a swap disk. But I just confirmed this uh, today. Uh, the first option was wrong. It's not correct. So you only have one option, which you need to use a dedicated uh, swap disk uh, uh, that you can check the disk configuration in uh, sys161 config. So this is sys, uh, sys161.conf file. So if we go down, you have a complete description of uh, what is in that uh, file. So as you can see, we have two disks here, and previously, we could just like use the M E M U F S, but that's not correct, uh, as I said. So you only need to use one of the disks here. So you have two disks, basically. What you need to use is one of them. The other was just like for assignment four uh, file system, but that's not used. So, and the size um, 32 uh, meg should be uh, enough uh, for, for our OS 161. And so this is the option that you have for the swap storage. Uh, and how should you uh, open a file, a raw file, uh, and that disk is basically in VFS open. You need to set the flight, uh, the file name to LHD0 raw. And then uh, the flag should be uh, read write. So. And that basically will just like uh, opens uh, a swap file for you. Uh, so when should you initialize a swap file? That should happen during the VM bootstrap in main.c uh, or somewhere around this. So the second question is how should we uh, notify the owner? So as we said, once you choose a page to swap out, you should find where this page was uh, mapped to. How should we do this? Now, if you remember when we discussed the core map, we said one of the fields that you need to have in a core map entry is owner information. And we said that this is for swapping. That's what you, what you need now. What is the owner information? Basically is the address space, have a pointer to the address space and the virtual address. So. You should not, once you get, uh, once you get the owner of uh, that page, then 
you should notify uh, the owner by updating its page table uh, to indicate that this page is now on uh, disk and it's not in memory. So this is for the second question and the third, where is the page? Now, how should we manipulate the uh, swap file? What you need to do is just like to divide the swap file into slots or, or swap slots. And each slot should be of size 4K because you're swapping pages. The page size is 4K, then it's much better to divide the file into uh, 4Ks. Um, uh, and each slot would refer to uh, a page. So, uh, and you need also to implement a new data structure that is, let's call it slot table. Uh, sorry. So we can call it a slot table, and that table was basically is a data structure that uh, maps uh, address space given the key is the address space virtual address, and the value is the swap slot. So you need to find a way to map, once you get an address space and the virtual address, you need to find a way to just like to retrieve the swap slot corresponding to that uh, address space and virtual address. So the requirement basically uh, is it should be able to allocate swap slot. So if for a given uh, address space and virtual address there is no swap slot allocated, then you need to, to allocate one. And this is basically happens in swap out. Or for a swap in, then given an address space and virtual address, you should be able to retrieve that swap slot. Or basically, let's say, uh, if you want to Make it simple, the offset in the file. So, uh, yeah. And also, it should be able to reuse the existing swap slot. So, let's say an address space and virtual address has a swap uh, slot allocated for it. You swapped out some page and then you swapped in. You shouldn't really free that one on the, uh, uh, on the swap file. But what you need to do is just like make it reusable. So later on, if you need to swap out, then you can, again, reuse that existing swap slot that is already allocated. Yes? So I think the idea is like a fixed size array for this, um, for all of our swap pages. And from the System 161 configuration file, it says that our the swap disk is about five megabytes. OK. Should we be using all five of those megabytes? So yeah, as I said, so uh, the, the, the size of that table Basically, should be how much? What is the size of the disk, the swap yeah, disk? Right. You divide it by 4K. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Yes. That's a cool map for. Yeah. Yeah. The same thing. Yes. Uh, the same thing. So. But I don't think. Yeah. But as I said, I think you need to use more. Uh, you need to increase the size of the swap disk. So yeah, five. You can use the offset to get the size of. Yeah, yeah, so it's the same as the core map. Uh, the, uh, the, the actual size is not known at the compile yeah, time. Yeah, right. You need to just like figure it out after you uh, boot the kernel. Yes. Uh, and yeah, for the size of the swap disk, I think 32 meg, that's what you need to use. Yeah. Uh, so any question on swap in? Uh, swap out, sorry. OK. Yes. Oh uh, no, CPU. one CPU. So wait, CPU has four cores. Okay. Um, so CPU has one four cores. It should be, I think. Yeah, so yes. Oh yeah, because you have so the MMU is part of the right, CPU, right, right, right. then you have only sixty-four entries, but and then yes. I don't you need to have a field in your format which says that this page is actually in this CPU's TLD. I mean, usually you can just do like a 
that would be like really more all these collectors with the number of people that are like 32. You know, I don't think it's going to go up to 32. Yeah, they're less than 32. Mm. Okay. So, yeah, you cannot make it up to 32. Yeah. I just so well, I think the, the way to solve this problem is just like you need to think of all the data structure implemented yeah. and each data structure is a private to which CPU, yeah, yeah which CPU, CPU or which you process like so yeah you know yeah so uh, I think this is one of the things that you need double check in the office hours okay. Okay. yeah just to see uh, anyway so any other questions on the swap out Okay, uh, so let's move on to uh, swap in. So swap in happens on a VM fault. When basically when a user program tries to access a swapped virtual page, uh, then the first thing that you need to do here is you need to find a swap slot, uh, to find the swap slot uh, and the swap table that correspond to that swapped virtual page. Uh, so you're gonna be given again the address space and uh, the virtual address and from that you're gonna retrieve the uh, swap slot and swap table and then you need to allocate a physical page uh, and that's what might need to also swap some other pages uh, if there is no enough uh, uh, physical memory available so once you allocate the physical page then you copy the content of the page uh, from disk to memory and you update the uh, PTE or the page table entry for that uh, process to indicate that uh, that page is now in memory. So it looks easier, but you still need to just like uh, keep in mind that you have the synchronization uh, that you need to uh, deal with. Um, so this is basically the swapping. Any questions on the swapping? Okay. So uh, the last thing we have here is address space with swapping. So how does the swapping changes the as copy and as uh, destroy? So previously what we've said that as copy basically needs to create an exact copy of the past address space structure and also copy every page in memory. Now we need to uh, not only copy every page in memory, but also if a page is in disk, then we need to copy it also. Just like by creating, either bringing that page in memory, or just like if the page is in disk, the best thing or the trivial thing is just like to create or allocate another uh, swap slot for it and copy that content into the new uh, swap slot in the swap file. Uh, this is for the AS copy and uh, for AS destroy, we're gonna dispose, as we said, uh, an existing address space structure and free every page. So previously we said in memory, now we say in memory and in a swap disk. So you free the page in memory and you also need to free the page in uh, swap disk and just like set that uh, slot into available. So you can use it later on. So basically, this is how uh, uh, it changes the uh, how swapping changes your address space interfaces. Any questions on here? Okay, so this is basically what I have for today. Uh, next week we'll probably have a final uh, review. So um, thanks for coming. And any questions? Good luck with Checkpoint 3, and I'll see you next week.